Let's welcome our Messianic Jewish brother, Grant Berry, from the East Coast. <laughs> Messianic Jewish brother, Robert Wolf, from the West Coast. Another Messianic Jewish brother from New Mexico. And from all the way from Jordan, with the Arabic background. Let's welcome. Come on up. We're going to go after Jews and Arabs together as a one new man tonight. My name is Grant Perry. I'm the founder of Reconnecting Ministries and the author and producer of the Romans 911 project, which I believe in the next few years you're going to hear, hopefully, prayerfully, begin to hear a lot of, about. Our mission is to rebuild love and unity in John 17, foundationally in the one you man, to help rebuild the walls of love and unity in the ecclesia, in the church, so that the Father can actually send the fullness of glory upon us. And I want to say to you tonight that if we want the fire, we have to reconnect the wire. I want to say that again. If we want the fire, we need to reconnect the wire. There's a pathway to John 17, love and unity, that in this day as Israel awakens, goes much deeper. It's actually been hidden during most of the church age. And for the sake of time, because there are a number of us here that are going to be sharing in this session, I want to read you some scripture. For there, for if their rejection brought reconciliation to the world... What will their acceptance bring but life from the dead? I want to state Paul's writings that the gospel is to the Jew first and then to the Greek. And there's a principle here now for us to recapture because a shift is coming to fulfill the Great Commission. It's the second until. You know, we hear a lot in the church about the first until, that the Lord Yeshua will not return until the gospel has gone into every nation, quite rightly. But we don't hear enough about the second until, when the Lord said that I will not return until you, O Israel, the Jewish people, meaning the Jewish people say, Baruch haba b'shem, Adonai, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is my covenant, Paul wrote, with them when I take away their sins. In Ezekiel 36, it says, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I will do these things, that I will show the holiness of my great name through your awakening but it is for the sake of my holy name. Abba's promises, Abba's covenants are on the line. Our Father's words and promises to restore the firstborn in the family. You know, especially at this conference where we're so focused on numbers and, and millions and billions, and this is wonderful, and we should be, because the gospel has to go throughout the nations. But I tell you, beloved, this reconnection 
It's small. It has to be sought out after. This restoration in God's family is different. But I tell you, it has enormous consequences. Beloved, we want the world reached. Pray for the Jews to believe again. Beloved, you want the fire and the power of God to come upon the church and upon the world. Pray for the church to awaken to Israel, to our end time role, to call on the breath, to call on the winds, that this breath may enter these slain and they may live. You want the gospel to reach the ends of the earth. We need to fulfill our role, beloved, with the mercy that we have received as a result of their disobedience, that now as they awaken, that mercy would be released back to them. Beloved, this mystery has been hidden, concealed during the church age. And as Israel comes back in the picture now, it is only coming to light but it's much deeper than we have thought. John 17, love and unity, foundational to it is unity between that remnant of Israel that that Asher spoke about and God's children from the nations, that the leadership in the church would begin to capture the significance of this message, the power equation, and take this key that we hang around our neck, put it in the door and unlock its unquestionable power because the restoration in the family of God is the heart of this equation. The father is drawing his family back to himself. He's a family of, he's a family man. And there's a circle of love here, beloved. A circle of love. The Jews that believed, that established the church, the apostles laid down their lives. They hung on crosses upside down. The Jews gave their lives to take Yeshua out to the nations so that they could believe in him and become one with Israel to receive her covenants and promises. That is the one you man that had the glory of God upon it. That is the one you man that changed the world. That is the one you man that Rome could not contend with. And there's a circle of love here, beloved, a circle of love. Hallelujah. And I'm going to read one more scripture to you, but I'm going to do a flip. And it's John 17, 20, when Yeshua takes away focus from the Jews and puts it onto the Gentiles. And he says, now I'm going to pray for you that will be, pray for those that will believe in me through your message. But I'm going to do a flip on this scripture, beloved, tonight. And I'm going to say that this is Yeshua's prayer for this time and this day. And my prayer is not for the nations alone. I pray also for the Jews who will believe in me through their message. Beloved, those of us that believe, Yeshua says, all I have is already yours. But as they lay down their lives, Yeshua now comes to us and he says, Will you lay down your life for my firstborn children? Avinu Melkenu, our Father, our King. Avinu Melkenu, can I hear that? Our Father and our King. Do you know that in the Jewish tradition that we have confused the Ten Commandments? We, we have been taught that the first commandment is that you shall have no other gods before me. 
And the second commandment is that we shall not take the name of the Lord in vain or that we shall not have carved images. In the Hebrew uh, tradition, those are combined. The first commandment, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. That is your Hebrew roots. The first commandment is not something that is said to us about something that we should do. The first commandment is the identity of God Almighty. And how does God identify himself? I am the one who sets you free. Get rid of your ideas of the First Testament, not the Old Testament, but the First Testament, defining a God of wrath. Our Father came to set us free, to take us out of the house of bondage, to fulfill the gift of freedom that he gives his children. That is who our Father God is. That is your first commandment, is God's identity. And if you look at the moves of the Spirit across the world, and you have seen all the people crying out to Jesus, and the Jesus movement, that I was here in Colorado Springs, I got to Colorado Springs 56 years ago, when I came to Colorado College. A lot has changed. The city is seven times as big. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father. But what we have been taught is coming to the Father is no one gets to heaven except to me, except through me. Heaven is not a geographical place of transportation. Heaven is a relationship with the living Father who sets us free. And it is transformation that brings us to heaven, not transportation. No one comes to the Father. I have heard my friend from the Navigators here, who I've never met before, God bless you, talk about building unity. The message has been unity, 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 unity. The prayers for unity, and yet we have not aligned ourselves with Abba, Father. We've gone so much after Jesus that we've lost track of where Jesus was bringing us to his Father. And when you look at 1 Corinthians 15, 24, when it's all done, he hands the kingdom back to his Father. Fathers create family. Fathers create nations. Fathers are patriarchs. When we align with the Father, then the one new man is easy. When we're not aligned properly with the Father, then we become denominationalized. We split, we splinter. And we all talk about all believing in Jesus, and we've lost track of where Jesus is bringing us to his daddy. My prayer for you is that you would remember this word, that we are going back to the Father because that's where the Lord is taking us. Amen? It's been said there's no greater blessing than to live your dreams awake. It's an honor to be here tonight. Arabs and Jews, what came first, the chicken or the egg? What's the biggest argument in the world? But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. We started off this evening praying that we get along and we work together as brothers and sisters in the family of man, but ultimately in the family of God. I wanted anybody in the house tonight 
who is of Arab descent, to please rise. Anybody in the house tonight? Anybody of Arab descent? Very interesting. One? All right. The representative. Thank you. The first Arab mentioned in Scripture is Genesis 16. Whose son was he? Whose firstborn son was he? Abraham. Abraham. There's a little bit of a problem with that when it comes to who's going to be in the line of the dependents and who's going to get the, the, uh, the, the benefit of being the firstborn son. Some nine chapters later, anyone here of his, that is an Israelite, please stand. Anyone in the room that is an Israelite, meaning of Israel, Eretz Israel, anyone, one. Oh, that's great. We got a few up on the stage here, so that's good. I say this because we got to get our timing down right. What came first? What are the firstborn benefits? As a matter of fact, Grant just mentioned the firstborn son. What does God say? Out of Egypt, I've called my son. What's that in reference to? Yeshua, Jesus. How does this line up with what God's, our heavenly father, wants to accomplish? Twice already this evening, I heard about the father's heart. So what is the father's will? We see the prodigal son. The guy comes home after hanging out with the pigs. The brother gets jealous. There's a big fight. The father's heart was to bring them together. I want to tell you how many people in this room are children of Abraham. Thank you. Because we are one. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. But we are only one when we are born of that Holy Spirit. And there is only one name under heaven by which we must be saved. What is that name? Yeshua Jesus. Thank you. What is God's name? Yahweh. Yahweh. I hear this all the time. Adonai, Elohim, Yahweh, Jehovah. And we can go to the burning bush and the situation with Moses and find out that God says, what, I am? That's usually where we stop. Keep reading. Just a few lines. This is God. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And by this name, I will be known forever. There are eternal consequences in the process of how we reach these billion souls of Grant, Grant just shared tonight. I want you to understand about the family of man and the family of God. Mankind is fallen in Adam and redeemed in the last Adam, Yeshua, Jesus. There is no other way, no other truth, no other life. But the Father's heart is for Jew and Gentile to be one. The process is to the Jew first, to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. We heard it last night from our brother from China. Go back to Jerusalem. So let's pray. We're going to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we're going to pr pray for the peace of Jerusalem to rule and reign in our hearts. Because Yeshua, Jesus, is our peace. The world has no peace. Peace, peace, there'll be no peace until he comes. So let's pray for this oneness, this unity. Israel was called by God his glory. And he scattered his glory over all the earth. Doesn't the Bible tell us his glory is going to be over all the earth? The John 17 prayer was, Father, any disciples here, any followers of Christ? Father, this relationship, we as God's children, Father, God shares his glory with no one. He shares it with no one, he says. Father, I have given them the same glory 
that you have given me. Father God, we pray for that glory to be manifest in the body of Christ, in the Messianic Jew, Gentile, Arab. Lord, we pray for the Arab nations. We pray for these representatives here tonight to speak the kingdom purpose of God, Jew and Gentile one, to the Jew first and the Gentile, but one in Messiah, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, amen and amen. For God so loved the world. I'm so happy that the world includes everybody. My cousins, my cousins, my brothers, my sisters, all those that are one in Christ. And you know, United Nations tried. Other organizations tried. They all failed. We can only meet at the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that goes not only for Jews and Arabs. It goes for everybody. You go to some places in the world, neighbors are fighting. People hate each other. There is no way of reconciliation but through the cross of Jesus. And this is the experience of us as a family. We feel the oneness with everybody that is born in the kingdom of heaven. And beyond that, love all the lost that need Jesus today. It is together, our logo, together, hand in hand, the world will be one for Jesus. And my final word, I would say, the promise that the Lord has given to Abraham was fulfilled in Jesus Christ, as in Galatians 3, that it is in the seed, that's Jesus Christ, all nations of the world will be blessed. Let's pray for that. The church needs to be very serious about everybody in the world to pray equally for the salvation of all. To God be all the glory. Amen. I would like to invite our Arab brothers and sisters, uh, including Terry on the stage, and Jewish brothers and sisters, including Sephardic Jews, to join the stage, please, right now. Any other Arab background, Jewish background on the stage? I believe tonight God wants to do a miracle. Not only in the Middle East, but also in our nation. That there would be this blessed supernatural unity among the descendants of Ishmael and Jacob, not only physical, but also spiritual. Amen? Think about the millions of Muslims who have come to know Isa. Think about how many Jews have come to know Yeshua since 1967 alone. So let's all stand. And I want all of you to just reach out your hand of blessing and let's all bless them in your language, whether it's your mother tongue or heavenly language. Just pray a blessing over, the, over our brothers and sisters who represent Jews and Arabs right now. Let's do that. Thank you, Lord. Father, we choose to bless our brothers and sisters who are now one in Christ, in one in Yeshua, one in Isa. Thank you, Lord, that there is no more wall of division between the descendants of Ishmael, descendants of Jacob, who are in Yeshua, who are in Isa. Thank you, Lord, that this is a Isaiah 19 moment, Father, that there's a highway of holiness that you are building Lord, between millions whom the enemy tried to divide, but we are one in Yeshua. And Lord, Lord, the rest of us, we join them as one as well. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Father, as you hear not only the sound of the shofar, but the cry of our hearts, would you do this miracle tonight? Would you do this around the world? That, that, that those who are in 
Yeshua, in Isa, in Jesus, regardless of our uh, history, regardless of our background, would truly experience that great unity. Mariel, sound the shofar, and let's all shout with the, with the shofar. Go ahead. Thank you. Please be seated. 